Do you not think that the fidelity of the transmission of the gospel in our generation and the ongoing integrity of the church is directly linked to how well or how poorly we make disciples, the conscientiousness uh, with which we engage in the Great Commission. Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to Holy Habitus. Um, today I'd like to talk to you about Matthew 28 um, and the Great Commission. I preached on it at church yesterday and it's still fresh in my mind, but I, I believe it should be fresh in our minds and spirits always because it is the Great Commission. Great in scope, great in significance, great in terms of the responsibility it gives us in, join, in joining meaningfully and partnering with God in this work of transforming the world one person at a time. So I think we should be thinking about making disciples. And this is a commission I believe is for all believers, not just ministers or youth pastors or specialists. It's something that all of us are called to do, to draw alongside and accompany those in our lives, those whom God has placed in our orbit, and teaching them about Jesus and showing them something a bit more about him and, and inviting them into the adventure of discipleship. So I want to ask you the question today, who, who are your 12? I mean, if we had a disciple like Jesus discipled, um, who are your 12? Now, I know for Jesus, those 12 was a significant and a theologically kind of profound number as he was seeking to renew and uh, restore Israel, as it were, and the people of God, and the 12 tribes, as it were. But, but it was also, I think, a logistical and practical uh, number in that we can only meaningfully kind of connect with and draw alongside and share life with about 12 people. And so who are your 12? Of those 12, three might self-select a bit more, like Peter, James and John. Um, and so you cast a net at, with, at 12 and maybe uh, not so many of those will re respond, but some will. So who are you 12? And you might want to get a piece of paper and just write 1 to 12 down the side and just dash out the people that, that God immediately brings to mind. And then you could prayerfully kind of sift through that list and change it over the next few days. But probably your initial instincts will be mostly right and your 12 will, will, will kind of fold out onto the page. And then think, how can I pour into these 12? What would be a concrete next step for how I could invest in them or, or, or invite them or challenge them a little bit further in their, in their journey? It might be saying, let's go for coffee sometime or let's read a bit of uh, Matthew's gospel or Luke's gospel or whatever. It, it might be um, inviting them into, uh, to join you for a mission or ministry uh, moment. You know, Jesus hoovered people in before they'd even made a commitment or realised he was the Messiah. And I think people catch the message it's more caught than taught often um, it might be giving them a, a book or resource or a cd or something that just is calibrated to where they are at their journey and would be a good next step that might just stretch them a little bit and make them think but it doesn't take them so far out of their comfort zone they go whoa whoa and back off and we might make mistakes that's okay but who are your 12 and who are you investing in if we do that if you join me in doing that this week i think we'll we will make inroads in, into into the kingdom and uh, we'll be guarding um, the fidelity of the gospel and the integrity of the church as we seek to desperately pass on the message of Jesus, the transformative message of Jesus to the next generation.